After spending 30 days or a month with the POCO F5 as my daily phone, I must say that POCO has finally gone back to its roots and introduced a flagship killer that's been kinda out of the picture for the past several releases. Basically, you now get a true flagship-like performance from the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 chip. So we're finally saying goodbye to the oldie but goodie Snapdragon 870 that powered the POCO F3 and POCO F4. POCO really did milk the heck out of it. But if you're one of the few patient people who are able to wait until a meaningful upgrade comes to the latest POCO F series, well, your wait is finally over. You're looking at the most powerful POCO F phone without having to pay basically for a more expensive device. Because the POCO F5 costs as much as the POCO F4 when it launched, 20,990 pesos. However, the RAM has been upgraded to 8GB for the base model alongside 256GB storage. The top model that goes for 22,990 pesos already gives you 12GB RAM with the same amount of storage. There is the POCO F5 Pro, which is the first Pro model of the F-Series, but we're not going to focus on that since that's a lot more expensive. The F-Series is all about the best features you get at the lowest price possible, and that's basically the chipset. So you have probably seen the benchmarks. The Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 posts incredible numbers on benchmarks, besting even the Snapdragon 8 Plus 1 Gen 1. Although it's not as good as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it's still the second best chipset from Qualcomm in terms of CPU performance. Personally, I think POCO has found a pattern or strategy here with the F-Series. They just have to get the second best chipset on the market, which is less expensive to procure but still very capable by today's standards. And although it's just the second best, it's still not as expensive as the best on the market. To be honest with you, I'm not even mad at POCO for reusing flagship chipsets from a year ago because for someone who reviews phones for a living, I still recommend buying a second-hand flagship phone than the latest mid-range phone simply because the overall experience is just different. So I like the move Boko is doing here and hopefully they are able to keep up with the competition as smartphones continue to get more expensive. So basically, the F5 has the best performance to price ratio right now. The simple day-to-day -day tasks are nothing but a breeze here. Whether you're on a video call, while scrolling through apps, or playing a 4K YouTube in the background, the F5 doesn't sweat handling all these processing. The most intensive task I've done here so far is to play the latest Honkai Star Rail from the makers of Genshin Impact. I think it's one of the most demanding games right now, next to Genshin, but with settings set on high at 60 frames, Star Rail looks smooth wherever I go. The only time I notice the FPS dip a bit below its comfortable 50 to 60 rate range is when there were huge assets need to be rendered like a huge boss monster. So the phone does straddle to a point, but it picks right back up really fast. Yes, it does get warm to the touch, but not to the point where you have to be worried when playing for an extended period. For the past few months, I've been recommending the POCO X4 GT over the POCO F4 if you're looking to game on a mid-range budget. I think the next recommendation here is the POCO F5, especially if you like the benefits of an AMOLED display. Speaking of the display, you're still looking at the same panel from last year. Still on the same 6.67 inches AMOLED with Dolby Vision, 68 billion color scored, 120Hz refresh rate, and up to 1000 nits peak brightness. Now, I'm not the type of user who nitpicks the bezel of a phone, but I have to applaud Poco here for making the bezels here thin and symmetrical. Sure, it's not curved, but there's something about symmetrical bezels that adds to the overall premium look of the device. I've seen some getting disappointed with a 240Hz touch sampling rate of the F5 display. Maybe if you're a pro gamer who actually needs a higher sampling rate, maybe that's an issue, but for both casual and advanced gamers, I don't think it's going to be an issue here. This is still one heck of a responsive display. In fact, I think it's too responsive to the point where I always get unintended palm touches. It's something I noticed and annoyed me, simply because the current phones I've used don't have this kind of issue. And for a flat panel, that shouldn't be the case. Some features are missing here for the display. There is no option to switch the always on display to always on. The seamless super wallpaper is also nowhere to be found, which is reserved for top end phones. I guess the F5 isn't a top end phone anymore due to the existence of the F5 Pro. And the AI image engine is nowhere to be found as well. But personally, I don't use that feature, so it's not a big deal. Overall, this is still a solid display that's bright enough outdoors, colorful enough to make you want to watch videos on a phone screen, and big enough to play and enjoy games. What I notice is the addition of dual-band Wi-Fi acceleration, 
it's now easy to activate the feature. So when you go to the Wi-Fi settings, just go to Network Acceleration and activate the feature. Basically, it connects the phone to two Wi-Fi networks to boost speed and coverage. I think that's a handy feature when you're playing competitive online games or when you're in a weak coverage spot in your home. Not a lot has changed or been added to the MIUI 14 based on Android 13 for the Poco F5. I will say though, Poco or Xiaomi has to fix these delayed notifications. We've been telling this to every single Xiaomi or Poco phone and it has to stop. It's annoying at this point. Xiaomi, when are you going to fix this? But anyway, the battery of the F5 is now at 5000mAh, a substantial upgrade from last year's 4500. And sure enough, I've been getting better screen time and a bit more battery before the end of the day. In heavy use, particularly Star Rail Gaming for an hour or two, I average 3-4 to four hours of screen time. In my typical day-to-day -day use that involves browsing on Wi-Fi and mobile data, it's easy to reach 5 hours of screen time. I think this is more of a solid 1-day battery phone. It's going to be tough to stretch that to 2 days considering the powerful chip and the fast display. But if you do need to top up, the 67W fast charger only needs 47 minutes to go from 0 to 100. Also, if you came from Poco F4 or Poco F3, the Poco F5 is probably lighter in weight simply because the back is using plastic instead of glass. Again, it's because of the F5 Pro that Poco had to switch to a cheaper material. Although it's a disappointing move from Poco, they did try to make it worth your while by adding a thin layer of film for this glitter-like snow-like pattern. It's actually interesting when it gets hit by lighting, it adds depth to the bland plain color of the phone but then again it does feel plastic in the hand simply because it is plastic. The rest of the package is pretty similar, so the fingerprint scanner is still on the power button and it's still fast and accurate, but the headphone jack is back and that's really great to see here. The build is still splash and does resistant so that's great to see as well. Lastly, the cameras. Now, the cameras aren't really the sole focus of the Foco F series. It's always been the performance, so any kind of upgrade you get in the camera department, I consider it as a bonus. And with the F5, the bonus part is the OIS or optical image stabilization. So basically, the presence of OIS helps in capturing sharper, better in focus photos in all scenarios and naturally more stable videos at the highest possible resolution. In videos, no questions asked, the OIS is in full effect. I'm impressed with the stability of videos even when zoomed in, but for the quality of the photos, it's okay. The 64 megapixel camera from Omnivision is definitely not the best in this category, but it's good enough to get you good enough shots. I think the software processing leans more towards the pixel look which is more HDR, but I also think Poco dialed out the HDR a bit and lifted the blacks a little bit which has plagued the previous Poco F phones. It also appears to me that the brown and black hue of the photos is now gone here, so as a result, the photos look more natural and accurate to life. The 16 megapixel selfie camera is okay as well. There are times when it would output crisp looking shots, but there are times as well when it's soft and bland in colors. However, most of the time, the selfie shots I get are sharp and colorful. Overall, the cameras of the F5 are a solid B. It's not the best, but it's reliable enough to be used whenever and wherever. I should stay away from the macro sensor. The quality isn't good. I also noticed video recording reaching up to 4K at 30, so there's no 4K 60 for anyone who's looking for that feature. Additionally, the stock camera app lacks the movie mode feature but it still has the vlog and long exposure modes for creative shots. So far, the Poco F5 delivered in almost all categories. It has a good battery now, it has one of the best performances at its price point, the display is bright and all, and the build quality despite the plastic pack brings an interesting finish and the headphone jack back. But one thing has disappointed me so far are the stereo speakers. Sure, there's a speaker at the bottom and another one beside the earpiece, but the combined quality doesn't really make up for a great sounding experience. Since Poco F3, the stereo speakers steadily move towards the teeny and canny quality. What's more interesting is that it's not only Poco that appears to be affected by this trend. Even other phones from other brands have sacrificed speaker quality in favor of better displays or more storage or better cameras. From a consumer standpoint, yes, it's disappointing. But from a business standpoint, if I'm the maker of these phones, what are the top qualities consumers look for when buying their next phone? Cameras? performance, design and build, battery, charging, where's the sound or speaker quality? It's way below these top qualities. Anyway, that's just to give you an insight or something to think about. Either way, that's the Poco F5. 
it's a damn good phone. I still hope to review the Poco F5 Pro and the feature, but would you get an F5 Pro with a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and with a 1440p display for 27,000 pesos over the Poco F5? Because simply put, you're only getting a sharper display and a faster performing chip. That's it for this one, drop us a bar like if you feel like supporting the channel and as always, until the next one, stay safe.